Pleasure to have back with us at ATS, Dr. Paul Forfia from Temple University. And you have a poster evaluating right heart parameters in patients with left heart disease associated pulmonary hypertension. Tell us about this, would you? Sure. So we've been interested in uh, ways to non-invasively evaluate right heart function and pulmonary vascular function for many years. And one of the hemodynamic parameters that has gained more and more attention over the last few years is this parameter called the diastolic pulmonary artery pressure gradient, or DPG. And the DPG is simply the difference in pressure between the pulmonary diastolic pressure and the pulmonary arterial wedge pressure. And this is thought to be arguably a better way to assess for pulmonary vascular disease than even the PVR. In particular, the DPG is thought to be better in patients who have pH associated with left heart disease for a variety of reasons. So in this group of patients, we looked at two parameters by echo to see how well they predicted when the DPG was elevated. So what's most significant of what you found? Sure, so we looked at two major uh, features by echo. One is what's called a Doppler notching pattern. The, the Doppler notching pattern is a, a visual assessment of the shape of the Doppler profile um, at the interface between where the blood leaves the right ventricle and enters the lung. And when that parameter is notched, it indicates that the impedance to blood flow or resistance in the lung is going to be elevated. And we've published several papers on this topic before. In this paper, we also then looked at this notching pattern alone and in combination with a measure of right heart function called TAPSI. Mm -hmm. And the main findings of the abstract were that when we combine an index of right heart function, TAPSI, and a Doppler index of high afterload, the notching, that it was very robust in predicting when the diastolic pulmonary gradient was elevated. And using a receiver operating curve, the area under the curve was 0.89, meaning that 89% of the time, we were able to detect when the DPG was elevated and doing this using simple non-invasive techniques. So you would recommend TAPSI and notching. How, how would this be received, do you think? Well, I think just like with any other uh, novel approach, it takes time to both, uh, for us to continue to validate our findings, for other people to validate our findings, which is very important. Right. And lastly, for the findings to be shown to not only predict something like an elevated diastolic pulmonary gradient, but to actually show that you can make medical decisions on clinical uh, scenarios and actually help patients using these approaches. So it takes, there'll be a few steps before I think it's widely embraced, but I think we have good insight from this poster. So what would be a next step for you? Next step for us, I think, would be to go to a population that we know has had a major intervention like a heart transplant or a left ventricular cyst device in left heart disease associated pH and see how well our parameters predicted either the, persist the persistence or the resolution of those findings. And that would give us uh, an additional level of fidelity for our findings. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you.